And then he said, do you know what Bessie the cow was doing in the next stall? And Bessie the cow said, what did she say? She said that it was not that. It was a moving experience. Whoa, oh, sorry. Hi, guys. Hey, <laughs> you, you interrupted um, my, my conversations with my, my new toys. That's right. Got these just the other day. Little horsey here and little piggy. Yeah, having some fun with them today. And, uh, well, they're just, just fun to have around. So I hope that I enjoy them here um, in my little uh, plate. Oop, pig's face turned around a little bit. Every time he shakes his head up and down, um, his neck moves it around a bit. So maybe we should put you down a little bit. Well, hey, there was also something else that I got at the store that I thought I'd share with you. Um, I picked up some bacon. Yep, the other night. So I took home the bacon. What, what, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, did any of you might have bacon? Um, I could ask you what your favorite breakfast food is and if bacon is, is something like that. Do you have uh, bacon on your list of favorite breakfast foods? Yeah, I, I enjoy bacon sometimes. So you heard me say that I, I brought home the bacon. <laughs> well, did you ever hear anyone else use that phrase to bring home the bacon? You have, yeah. So what does it mean? Well, the phrase to bring home the bacon means to actively work somewhere and bring home some income or to earn a living for your family. For instance, we could say this about, let's say, Sarah. Sarah chooses not to work, so Robert has to bring home the bacon. Well, the origin of this phrase, bring home the bacon, is a very interesting story, as, as I looked it up. Sometimes um, it's suggested to be based on this story of the Dunmow Flitch Trials. Now, we don't have time to explain that whole thing to you, but apparently it's a tradition which still continues to this day in the town of Great Dunmow, which is in Essex, which is in England. And it's based on the story of a couple who, in a long time ago, 1104, impressed the prior, or the leader, of Little Dunmow with their marital devotion to each other to the point where he awarded them a flitch or a side of bacon as a gift. So apparently in Dunmow, um, the practice is that uh, if a young couple who are married uh, are still married, are still happy after a year of marriage, they give them a side of bacon as a gift. <laughs> oh my. Now it does take work to have a happy marriage and it also takes work to do a lot of good things I think. So to bring home the bacon is a term that can have relevance to someone who is receiving a, war a reward for their hard work. Um, you know this is actually cold, frozen, so I'm going to put it down because my fingers are, are getting a little cold. But uh, uh, being a good worker or a hard worker is, is very important. Um, and there's value in it. Um, in fact, God created us to be workers. Genesis 2.15 says, The Lord God put the man in the Garden of Eden. He put him there to farm its land and to take care of it. From creation, the beginning of creation, we actually have been called to be workers on the earth, to steward the earth and to take care of things that are around us. The Bible also has some wisdom. Um, to offer us in regards to the value of work or being engaged in something. Proverbs 18.9 says, Anyone who doesn't want to work is like someone who uh, destroys things. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. I would rather work than destroy things. Um, Proverbs 6.8 6 tells a story of the ant. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander. The ant has no leader or ruler, but together the ants store up food in the summer and they gather food at harvest time. They are hard workers, those ants. Proverbs 13, 4 says, People who refuse to work want things and get nothing, but the desires of people who work hard are completely satisfied. Now, as God's people, I believe we are encouraged to be people who work hard or to do everything that we can well, as much to the best of our ability. Now, I know that not all of us have jobs, but we all do have activities that we do. Um, whether it's going to a day program, whether it's working on crafts, whether it's helping out around our houses, um, and it may mean being employed by uh, an outside company or business. But no matter what, we are encouraged to be people who work hard. 
to be faithful, to be committed to what we do. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, no matter what you do, work at it with all your might. Be committed to something, um, and then your reward will follow. Colossians 3.23 reminds us, work at everything you do with all your heart. Work as if you were working for the Lord. So by being engaged and active and involved and committed to whatever we're doing, we are honoring God, I believe. Hard work is to be useful, and it can help others. Uh, Jesus said this about work in John 6, 27. Do not work for food that spoils. Work for food that lasts forever. That is the food the Son of Man will give you. For God the Father has put his seal of approval on him, on that person who works hard. So whatever you do, work to please God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, So eat and drink and do everything else for the glory of God. You know what? It's important to be committed, um, to bring home the bacon, to bring home the reward, to know that what we do in life does make a difference for ourselves, for others, and also for God. So today, I wish you a day that's filled with peace, a day that's filled with joy, uh, a day that's filled with activity. And may you see the results of your work in whatever form that takes. Have a great day.